from University of Barcelona uh, and me will be uh, uh, co-moderating this session uh, where we have three pre presentations. Uh, the first one uh, will be from uh, Dr. Alessandro Yanesh from uh, University of Naples. Uh, then it will be followed by uh, Juan Diego uh, Martin Martin from University of Barcelona. Uh, and in the end, uh, I will be presenting some of the work uh, uh, on Jurassic uh, to conclude this particular session. Uh, so to start with, uh, uh, if uh, I allow, uh, if uh, uh, Dr. Saeed Jadun is there, uh, so that we can have some uh, introductory remarks uh, on the uh, on what we had done uh, in the morning session and what we will be doing now. Uh, Dr. Jadun, you is there? You are there? Uh, Dr. Jadun, can you hear me? Okay, uh, so uh, he might be uh, not available at the moment. So we, we start directly. Uh, so so I introduce uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Alessandro Yanesh. Uh, he's a professor of sedimentary geology at the University of Naples. Uh, his research interests include carbonate stratigraphy, sedimentology with special attention to diagenesis and regional geological Im implications. Uh, through integrated integration of facies analysis and isotope ge geochemistry. Uh, Dr. Yanesh is uh, involved in various uh, projects internationally. He, he had also worked in Iran uh, on various, uh, on, uh, on some of the outcrops. And uh, we had some, some students uh, working under his supervision. Yeah, this is what we were talking about, about uh, uh, Mr. Avas, who is a lecturer in University of Swabi, and he is soon joining to to be, uh, uh, to be under supervision of Dr. Yanesh. Thank you, uh, uh, Dr. Yanesh, for joining us. Uh, the the floor is yours. Thank. You. Okay. Thank you, Mutaz, for your kind invitation. I can start to share my video. Okay. I think it's okay. I will. Okay. Okay, everybody is uh, seeing my my desktop, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, okay. Perfect. Okay. So well. Uh, okay. So this uh, again, I thank uh, Mutas for the invitation, and uh, he gave me the opportunity. He, he asked. Sorry, uh, Zendro, we are not listening to you. Some problems, some issue with the, with the mic, I think. Your microphone is switched off. Now it's okay. Okay, now it's okay, I think. Yes? Yes. Yes, okay. <laughs> From time to time, he... he, he he is which is which of alone i don't know why okay so the the my my talk will be especially on 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 outcrops on field geology and uh, i collected uh, all the many different examples of studies about uh, dolomites so not uh, this uh, very important aspect of the genesis of carbonates uh, i collected uh, uh, several uh, mm, papers, several uh, projects I did in the last uh, 10 or even 20 years, starting from my PhD studies. And uh, so, first of all, I have to thank uh, all the all the people who, who, in a way or another, contributed to to these uh, studies, particularly my my PhD students, uh, among which uh, you see a long list. Uh, there is a Francesco Vinci, who is now in Panterra in Netherlands, and he is in the audience. Um, and uh, my colleague Mariano Parente, Stefano Tavani, and Stefano Mazzoli. Uh, the first is a stratigrapher, and then uh, two structural geologists who have been very 
fundamental to 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 complete uh, these projects. So the idea is to 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 compare uh, different examples because uh, as uh, everybody would say knows, I have to try to uh, to switch. I don't know why it's locked. Okay, second slide. Okay. Um, uh, first of all, is to to remember to everybody that uh, for a long time, uh, geologists, sedimentologists used to say uh, that uh, dolomite is a complex matter. Uh, there are a lot of different dolomite, and uh, and especially what I want to to bring to the attention, there are many modes of generate dolomites, but even more of affecting uh, pro reservoir properties. And in this respect, uh, southern Italy for me has been a good uh, field laboratory because uh, we have a, a very, very thick uh, platform carbonate succession, which offers uh, many, many opportunities to, to study different types of, uh, of uh, dolomitization affecting the same, uh, the same calcareous, the same uh, carbonate body. So I will focus, uh, I will start with Upper Cretaceous and uh, showing uh, examples in which uh, limestone and dolomites are interlayered. And uh, I will talk about the importance of texture at the bed level, but also of the importance of stacking pattern. Uh, so in uh, what is mechanical or fracture stratigraphy, uh, how these uh, may affect particularly uh, large uh, fractures what uh, fractures that sometimes are known in in in, in petroleum industry as the fracture corridors so those fractures which are very fundamental to 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 productions of uh, hydrocarbons then i will talk of uh, some examples uh, of uh, dolomitization affecting pelagic limestone uh, from uh, different localities and uh, i will show a, a very peculiar case in which the dolomitization affect uh, bedding and then fracture, uh, and then the fracturing of rocks. So we'll show this, uh, and we'll talk about the importance of this uh, of this uh, dolomitization affecting pelagic limestone in in, in Cretaceous. Uh, and then I will give some uh, information about uh, what was uh, one of my first finding when I started my career. Uh, differences which are quite important in at least in part of the Mediterranean between Norian and Retian Jurassic uh, Dolomites and how I found this uh, uh, useful also in Greece and in Iran, particularly in Luristan and that part of Iran which is close to the Iraqi border. I don't know if I will have time. Uh, Mutaz asked me to show something about Sardinia because he know he knows quite well the uh, a fantastic examples of hydrothermal dolomites that are present in Sardinia. But uh, there are many things to talk about, so I don't know if we will have time. Uh, we will see. Um, uh, first, I will start from uh, basic problems that normally uh, there is a believing that an accepted believing that dolomites are more porous than, than limestone, so are better better uh, reservoirs. Actually, the, 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 the story is a, a bit more complex because first we know very well that this is a compilation of data by Herrenberg, Heberly and others. Uh, this is true when we compare dolomites which are deeply buried. If we look at dolostones when they are not uh, not buried, for example, in, uh, in the, the examples on the left, you have uh, a compilation of data from, from, uh, from Bahamas, from ODP uh, data. You will see that uh, when uh, the genesis starts, dolostone and limestone have a, have, a, have a comparable and variable, very variable and comparable porosity. Uh, conversely, when they are buried, uh, dolostones uh, have a larger porosity, okay? Uh, of course, all those have to be taken as a, as a approximation of a large scale uh, of, of many occurrences. That means that you may have a large spread of, of, 
of porosity both in limestone and in dolostone, but on the average, the deeply buried dolomites preserve preserve um, uh, the, 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 the porosity much better than do limestone. Another thing, anyway, quite important, is that if we compare data, this is, for example, from the Asmari formation, that you are probably are aware because it's from uh, uh, much closer to, to, to Pakistan than to Italy. Uh, uh, if you compare a large compilation of data, you may also see that for a given porosity, the permeability of dolomites is not necessarily better. So larger porosity means large storage potential, but does not mean uh, necessarily that you produce more oil. And uh, this is seen also in this, uh, in this uh, compilation, in this case, a compilation of North America. Uh, it's a quite old compilation by Schmoker and Ali. As you see on the, on the right, uh, if you take uh, North America reservoirs, uh, the, the Dolomites reservoirs are on average less porous, mm? on average, of course, but still they are more productive. So if you compare just the barrel of, of oil produced in, with dolomites in North America, you produce more dolomites. So this led uh, the conclusion uh, of Schmoker and Ali that uh, apparently this large produ production is partly due to the fact that there is uh, more uh, fractures in reservoirs, uh, in dolo dolomitic reservoirs. And this is uh, another uh, assumption which is generally made, I have heard uh, quite frequently in Italy, in uh, both in uh, field geologists as in uh, oil, uh, oil geologists, that uh, uh, to have dolomites means to have more fractures, so more fracture porosity, more permeability. So we will see that this is not always true because we have to distinguish the average from the mean, uh, the average from the single case. And in fact, I will show you data which have been published uh, recently uh, by myself and uh, all my co-workers that include people from uh, Shell, Shell Italy. And uh, after the, 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 what I will show now, I will uh, say uh, this conclusion that the impact of dolomization on porosity and permeability uh, and fracture attributes of carbonates is very complex and it's not amenable to simple general rules. Uh, when we talk about average, we forget that we have uh, many different cases. And so each case history has its own specificity and dolomite texture is expected to play a significant role in affecting the porosity and permeability. So uh, as I will show you several, uh, several examples from uh, different parts of Italy, this is a, on the left, you have a, a very simple geodynamic map of Italy, in which you see the, the Alps and the Apennines, which are fold and trust belts. And uh, of course, all the major in red gas and in green uh, oil occurrence are in the, in the forest deep. So in, the, in, the, in that uh, foreland fold and trust uh, belt, uh, which we have been uh, talking in the in the in the previous in the previous talks and uh, uh, okay this is a, a sketch a very general sketch uh, sketch section which is uh, useful for the Apennines so you have a, a transport of uh, naps of, uh, of overthrust toward the Adriatic area and uh, you have the, the, the location, uh, as you see here, of different, uh, of different setting uh, to locate hydrocarbon and gas. Okay. Uh, so if we go closely to southern Italy, we see that in southern Italy we have the, the petroleum system is uh, the, the reservoir are in the buried part of the Apulia platform. This is the Apulia region of Italy, the foreland. And in this, uh, in this uh, part of the partly uh, thrusted Apulian platform, there are the major occurrence of oil in southern Italy. We studied with my group uh, these carbonates, the carbonates occurring on top of this, of this uh, subducted slab, so on the overriding naps. 
generally, these were not considered good analogs of these carbonates. Generally, people prefer to work in the Murge, but we demonstrated that main, many, many features of the carbonates occurring, for example, in two areas here in Monte Faito, in Sorrento area, Sorrento Peninsula, Amalfi Coast, probably known for touristic reason, and Monte Chianello area here in Cilento, there are, there are two examples of uh, Cretaceous carbonates, which are uh, closely comparable to the Cretaceous carbonates that in the subsurface host the large oil um, reservoirs of southern Italy. So this is a... Um, so the geology of this uh, of the of the fold and thrust belt is dominated by two main domain. One is the, a basin, which was in between the two carbonate platform, the Apulia one and the Apenninic one. And this uh, uh, succession was a basinal one on continental crust. But at the, in the Apenninic platform, you had a persistence all along the Mesozoic of a shallow platform sedimentation. So with uh, dolomites in the Triassic and uh, limestone plus some dolomites in Jurassic and in, uh, in Cretaceous. Okay, so I will show you some examples of dolomites in these, uh, in both these successions. Also, here is the uh, Monte Faito, as you see, it's quite close to Naples. This is the Vesuvio volcano, and this is the fantastic place, which is uh, Positano. Mm -hmm. We spent a lot of time not in Positano Beach, but here up on the mountains, because there is a fantastic exposure, as you may see, of uh, flat-lying, uh, not very much deformed carbonates. Similar occurrence in this ridge, the Monte Chianello. The carbonates has the right, the right age to be considered good equivalent of the subsurface reservoirs of, uh, of Basilicata area. Uh, we did uh, many different uh, research. Uh, some were uh, establishing the, the general stratigraphy and facies. Uh, and uh, we documented, for example, the, the, the importance of uh, thin sedimentary tectonics in mid-Cretaceous time, who was uh, very instrumental to, to create uh, large, huge bodies of breccia, dolostons, so brecciati dolos, the, um, dolomites and limestone, very comparable to what uh, we have in the subsurface, and part this is, for example, a fantastic example on the touristic uh, roads going to Positano. There is this wall in which you can recognize thin depositional faulting, uh, breaches, and organic rich dolomites forming in between. It's a kind of a micro analog of an intra platform basin, which, by the way, it's important to note that this is exactly the age of the source rock of the of the subsurface in the in the Apulian platform. And as you may see, this is an outcrop here, which exactly look at here, and this is a core from our reservoirs. There are very, very similar uh, laminated black dolomites, mm, which are source rock, and they are very, very close also to the reservoir rock. Um, uh, can you can you please use the pointer so that uh, that yeah, I, I'm using the my my mouse. You cannot see it. Oh, okay, it's a small one. Okay, uh, it's quite small. I have to move. Uh, okay, like that. Okay. Uh, one of the things we we found uh, we we concentrated was the character of the the type of dolomia of dolomites. We started from Albian dolomites, and we recognized the two two type of dolomites which were quite different in terms of, uh, of petrophysics and also uh, quite different of, in terms of, uh, uh, of isotopes, uh, but both are considered very, very early in diagenesis. So they were formed uh, uh, before any important, any important uh, burial. 
This is an example of the very fine grade dolomite. You, you may see a, a very regular mosaic. This was probably replacing a, a, a micrite, micritic limestone. Uh, and other examples, and on the, this is uh, by contrast the other, the different type of dolomites. You see larger crystals which make a mosaics like that, and in these mosaics you may appreciate that probably you replaced some uh, uh, granular carbonates. So this is, this was not a muddy precursor. In uh, some of these mosaics, but not not very common, uh, you may have a very good permeability. What is uh, uh, interesting for the, from a reservoir point of view that on a on a very very small scale and even on a, a thin section scale you may have dramatic differences in uh, in permeability in porosity sorry um, these uh, these values have been calculated by just by optical uh, analysis uh, but you may appreciate how different may be on a very on a very local scale. Uh, the, the difference in, in uh, porosity, which translates also in a different uh, pore throat structure, and so in permeability, as you may see from this capillary curve. For uh, this is the very um, fine grain dolomites and the coarse dolomites. Uh, these uh, these samples could appear as very very interesting from a reservoir point of view, but be sure that it's quite the exception more than the rule. Most dolomites are really uh, both uh, both uh, thin, uh, um, fine grained and coarse grained dolomites are very, very um, are not very porous, and uh, this is a possible evolution of of porosity starting from a mud. You may have these two type of dolomitization, probably driven by different kind of of. Um, of precursor. So in this case, you may have probably a fine grained precursor. In that case, you have a, a, a Paxton, for example, and uh, you get, sorry, these different uh, mosaics. But as you may see, the, the only case in which you have a very large porosity is this one, in which probably a, a, a large scale mosaics is affected by some dissolution created the, the, the pore space you have seen in previous pictures, but this is absolutely rare. So most of the, the rocks have a porosity which is never larger than 4%, which is a, a four times larger than in limestone, so you have a, a, an increased storage potential, but of course you have not very much uh, permeability in terms of matrix permeability. Again, here you can see the change in texture on a very, on a, on a, on a bad scale, okay? What is more interesting is that this different type of dolomites have a different uh, tectonic behavior. Uh, the, the typical uh, background uh, fractures affecting uh, these beds are strongly affected also by the texture more than by the, the, the lithology. Uh, I mean that if you have a, a do, dolomite, coarse dolomite, you may see that it is uh, much, much less uh, uh, fractured than limestone, but also much less fractured than dolomite, fine grain dolomite, dolomite A. Mm? That means that uh, fine grain dolomites have a tectonic behavior which is quite comparable apparently to dolomite B. Mm? This is shown in this, uh, in this simple graph in which we, we calculated the, 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 the density of fractures and as you may see, uh, in, uh, for very fine grain dolomites, you have a density fracture which is uh, comparable or even larger than in limestone, respect to coarse dolomites, which is much less fractured. Okay, and this is shown also on this uh, kind of relationship, in which we have the two type of dolomites, and we we put also data from the subsurface from the. Um, from the reservoir of Basilicata, the reservoir which are in carbonates of the same age from the Apulian platform. Okay, 
So uh, a, a, an important control of a crystal size of dolomites on, uh, on fractures. Okay. Uh, of course, f fractures, particularly the strata bound fractures, as is uh, generally quite well recognized, uh, have a density fractures, which depends very much on the, on the thickness of the layer. But the main conclusion for us was that um, the dolomitized part of the reservoir have obviously a greater potential storage, but not necessarily they have high fracture permeability uh, the, or anyway any effective permeability, which which we which is uh, consistent with what has been found by by the, the reservoir engineer in in the subsurface. Okay. So this is the conclusion from from analysis of single beds in two occurrences of Albion. Then we turned our attention to the to the process itself of dolomitization, because in this area, this is a, a 3D model of the Monte Faito Ridge. We have, uh, as you see, a succession covering the interval from the Alterivian, Barremian up to the Albion. And any be uh, every bed can be followed for kilometers. So we did a lot of, uh, of field logging, and uh, then you will see that we did also some uh, virtual outcrop model. Okay, but uh, the, the stratigraphic studies give us the opportunity to distinguish a three main interval. Uh, the, the lower interval, uh, the middle interval, is completely dolomitized, and this is in contrast with the lower one, A, and the upper one, C, which are composed of limestone and some dolomites. So one uh, question arise, why we have this change in the degree of dolomitization mm, with time? Uh, generally, the, the full succession was up of very elementary cycles, shallowing upward cycles, uh, which had uh, all the variation from a totally limestone cycle with a top, with a, some brownish, uh, marly top uh, indicating exposure, to, uh, to cycles completely dolomitized. And uh, in between, of course, you had uh, partly dolomitized cycles. Generally, the dolomites, you will see, is concentrated on top, and uh, the degree of dolomitization decrease going uh, toward the bottom. Okay. Uh, this is uh, uh, the ridge we, uh, which has been logged. Uh, uh, this is partly. This is the, the job of Francesco. So if Francesco would like to, to help me in uh, illustrating this, these are his slides. Uh, so this is a description of the limestone of the first interval. The second interval is almost entirely dolomitized. Okay, you can see again uh, fine-grained and coarse-grained dolomites. And then in the Barremian Aptian, you have uh, open marine, uh, open marine uh, limestone with just a few dolomites. When you have dolomites, that's what it looks like. You see the bottom is totally dolomitic, and when you go uh, in the low, lower part of the bed, uh, the degree of, uh, of the percentage of dolomite is decreasing, suggesting a, a top to bottom circulation of fluids. Okay, This is uh, one more case. You see, in this case, the, on the bottom, you have some lamination, intertidal fishes, and then uh, the dolomites is diffusing toward the lower part of the bed. This is really a very, very nice uh, succession to, to see this kind of, of stuff. Uh, an interesting topic is uh, are these features that, okay, uh, we have this kind of stylolites. Uh, we have published something of this, are actually dolomite seams that are probably formed through the selective uh, resistance of dolomite to dissolution during uh, uh, pressure solution. So dolomites act a little bit like uh, insoluble residue in, uh, in normal stylolites. Mm -hmm. uh, but this is just the uh, details. 
Uh, again, you may see the two types of dolomites we recognized, uh, also the electron microscope image. And uh, these two types of dolomites have uh, interesting differences. For example, their content of uh, their ratio of uh, calcium versus magnesium is quite different. You may see that the fine grain dolomites preserve a, 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 a are calcium rich dolomites. Uh, on the contrary, coarse dolomites are um, are more stoichiometric. Okay, this is a, a trend which is well known in the literature. These two peaks are quite typical, and generally the dolomites, the, the calcium excess is uh, interpreted as due to quicker reaction, um, whereas the the on the other the stoichiometric dolomites are considered to have been formed to, through slower reaction times. This may be due to the concentration of the fluids during the uh, during uh, diagenesis. And these are the, the the data showing that quite absolutely clearly that the uh, the the dolomites of the interval B, so the completely dolomitized interval, are generally more. Um, enriched in oxygen isotopes than are the coarse dolomites and dolomites of the interval A and C. Okay, uh, these very high values of, uh, of carbon isotopes are simply an effect of an event of enrichment of a carbon isotopes, which was uh, is known to have been worldwide is the vice the Weiser event, I think, the Valanginian event, which was discovered by Andrea Lini and Elmi Weiser, and so is now known as the Weiser element. But what is interesting for us is the oxygen isotopes. Okay? And so you see that there is a, a signature in, uh, in the stable isotopes that the salinity difference mm, from uh, dolomite fine grained and coarse grained. Okay? Uh, also, the trace elements give the opportunity to 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 make some difference, and the strontium isotopes shows that particularly the limestone hmm, is very close to the to the the expected values for marine waters, and many dolomites also. Some dolomites are more uh, radiogenic. But we, there is a signature that there is the good evidence that even the strontium isotopes were inherited from seawater. Okay, so this is again the, the picture I have shown um, before. But in this case, I may add that we have the conclusion for this outer Rivian, uh, for this outer Rivian, Barremian, and Aptian interval that the fine dolomite was created um, by more salty waters. So we did uh, this, uh, this hypothesis using the classic reflux model for dolomitization, in which uh, we imagine that uh, during interval B, the, the dolomitization was uh, more effective because uh, fluids were more saline. And so at each cycle, you had the possibility of fluids that going through different beds and, uh, mm, and affect the whole succession and uh, give you this interval of total dolomitization. Okay, uh, this is a model which uh, I, I would like to to test, and uh, I don't know if it's in the, in the audience. Uh, Muhammad Awais from Pakistan is now uh, the next student of PhD, and we will uh, we will use these uh, very large outcrops to 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 make detailed uh, verification by geochemistry of this model. Mm, the main conclusion of this of this part of the job has been that this interval of a total dolomitization may be explained by a different climate, so a, a, a period of uh, um, aridity. Uh, between a more humid period of time, which find a good correspondence also. Uh, sorry, I have 
there is some problems in the in the in, in the colors of this but on the on the right there should have been a a columns taken from uh, Croatia where in the other part from the other side of the Adriatic Sea we have similar platform carbonates and the distribution of limestone and dolomites uh, has more or less uh, the same trend and this is very important in terms of exploration because give you an idea of what should be expected in terms of dolomites in the subsurface. Mm -hmm. Uh, so this is for, but this is especially for science. Uh, ah, uh, okay, this is the, the model I have shown, and this is a, a, a comparable case of lower Cretaceous dolomites and interlayered limestone, which has been used as a field test by Garcia Fresca, Jones, Shu, and by all people working on modeling of reflux. Uh, among these, there is also Tatiana Gabellone, who did uh, her PhD with, uh, with me in, in Naples, and she's now in, uh, in Milano, after having uh, worked with, uh, with, um, Tatiana, uh, with uh, Fiona Whitaker, which is the leading specialist for, for this kind of, uh, of models. So we would like to, to extend this kind of test, of field test, to the area of Monte Faito. Mm -hmm. But Montefaito offered us the possibility to, to study also the through-going fractures, which are very important for, for productions. And uh, so we did, uh, in a more inaccessible part of the peak, there is a, a, a vertical cliff, the Monte Conocchia cliff, uh, on which we did uh, um, a, a, a virtual outcrop models using a drone. This is the, the actual outcrop. As you see, it's not easy to go on, but still we did, a, a, we did a, the, the stratigraphic section on this side by walking. But then with the use of a modern drone, we did a, a virtual outcrop model. We analyzed the outcrop model. Particularly, I, I would like to, to remember here the, the, that the, the the very important part of the job was done by Stefano Tavani, he's now in Naples, and Stefano has, uh, has developed a, a, a software, very friendly software to analyze large data set of this type, is open plot, and uh, recently is uh, is um, is uh, also developing uh, methods to use simply a smartphone to, to generate a 3D model. But uh, anyway, it's an approach which now is quite common. Now there is the possibility to draw lines. These lines are recognized as, uh, as uh, planes. And then uh, you may, you may uh, trace all these lines. And uh, you, with the open plot, you can make a selection, very easy selection of the data to select only the data you are working with. Uh, particularly, uh, you may select the, the fracture that have the right orientation for, uh, for making a scan line and for making statistical studies. And uh, so we decided to select only the, the fracture larger than one or three meters, I don't remember now exactly. Uh, and then we came out with uh, this kind of a plot showing uh, where we had the, the, the most dramatic changes in, uh, in fracture density. Hmm? This has been correlated with dolomite, but what is more important that we checked all this on, on the field, and normally we had the confirmation that the, the point where most fracture arrested was when you, you had a very finely laminated dolomites. And the reason was probably not the dolomitic nature of the of these layers, but simply the fact that they were they, they were finely laminated. By coincidence, these intervals were dolomitized because they are intertidal or sequence boundary, particularly uh, event. But uh, the lithology is not the most important. Hmm. So we try to, to make a sequence stratigraphic scheme of this succession. So we, we studied all the elementary cycles and we interpreted 
them uh, by using Fisher plot. And uh, Francesco particularly developed also a method to, to, to recognize the same cycles and so to build the same Fisher plot in subsurface, starting from uh, just from uh, uh, FMI in subsurface. And so we recognize that uh, the main, uh, the main uh, third order cycles controlled the, uh, the fracturing. Okay. Uh, just, okay, it's not usual now to, to comment about the sequence radiography model, but the conclusion is that we have a key, which is a, a sequence radiography, who is controlling the thickness of beds. And uh, by controlling the thickness of beds, is controlling the distribution of uh, through-going fractures. So those fractures which are most important for productions. And so this, uh, this has been proven also by comparison with the subsurface that the, the system can be applied for uh, to the to the subsurface. Okay, and this is the final uh, a final plot of the of this study. Okay, so the the. The thickness of bed, more than lithology, is controlling the, the, the distribution of fracture. That's the second lesson. Now I go to a, a I think, a quite pe peculiar case uh, we, we found by comparing two outcrops. One is in Lago Negro. So remember, is the, the basin between the Apulia platform and the Apennine platform. The second one is in Gargano which is the Apulia platform. Okay. The idea is that normally uh, uh, dolomitization affects platform carbonates, which are thick bedded. And uh, normally bedding is not affected by dolomitization. What happens when dolomitization affects a thin bedded limestone? We found two contrasting behaviors. Uh, okay, one is uh, here, you see Potenza, this is the area of the Lago Negro basin outcrops, and the other one is in, uh, is in uh, Gargano Peninsula, which is part of the Apulian platform, okay? Uh, in this case, we have a Cretaceous, lower Cretaceous, Maiolica type uh, uh, limestone, the Maiolica, and, and here we have a Upper Triassic pelagic limestone. Okay. Okay. Here is the just to remember you that this is the Lago Negro basin and the Apulian platform. We are not on that side of the Apulian platform. We are on the side of the Apulian platform, looking to the east. Okay. By the way, the 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 Dolomites in these Triassic rocks was formed much 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 later in the history. It was formed within the fold and trust belt during the, the formation of the Apennines in Miocene time. So this is an outcrop from Gargano. You may see a nice dolomitization front. On the left, you have the limestone, which is a very, very fine grade, tight limestone, the kind of limestone we call a lithographic. And on the, on the right, you have the dolomitic, the dolomitized part of the Maiolica limestone. And this is a, um, a comparison of the bedding in limestone and in dolomite. As you may see, this is at the same scale. As you may see, the, the thickness of bedding is much larger. Hmm? It's evident also from here when the rock is dolomitized. So in some way, the dolomite has amalgamated beds. Hmm? If we go, okay. And if we go here on the Triassic example in Dolosan and Limestone, and we, we make the same, we see that there is no change in, in uh, limestone thickness, in, uh, in bed thickness. And so there is no change in fracture distribution. The problem is that uh, at the beginning, I thought that this could be could be due to the timing of dolomitization respect to the fractures. But the conclusion is that the, the key point is that the bedding in the case of Triassic uh, presents, um, each bed is separated by the other one by a thin uh, shaly layer. 
On the contrary, in the, in the myolica, there is absolutely no shale. There is only sometimes, or no, quite often, there is a stillolites uh, from bed to bed, but there is quite rarely there is a, a shale. And we think this is the reason for a different behavior, which, of course, can be uh, um, computed, can be quantitatively shown with, uh, with this kind of, 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 uh, <clears throat> of diagrams. No? When you see the, the, the bed thickness and the frequency of, of, uh, of the of fractures, and you see that in Gargar there is a big difference between limestone and dolostone. Okay, um, and so this is our explanation. In the case of Lago Negro, uh, you have uh, f that f between beds you have some shales. In Gargano, you have just stillolite. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so the fracture density is, a, is uh, affected by the thickness, but probably also by matrix characteristics. Mm. Uh, for, and here you may see the characteristics of these beds. Okay, uh, this is a, a, for Gargano and Lago Negro is the limestone. Mm. You see a limestone with uh, some radiolarians uh, with some filaments in the in both cases, and uh, you see the SEM images, and these are the dolostones. In Gargano, the dolomite is much is coarse as in is, as in Lago Negro. Uh, Pignola is a locality of a Lago Negro succession, and as you may see here, you have a much larger porosity. Okay, this is probably also affecting the 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 behavior of this, uh, as is shown in this. This is not statistically very. Uh, very important, but there is the possibility that for a, a given bed thickness, no, the, the, the fracture spacing is different in Gargano respect to Lago Negro. And so, so this is the part, the role of the matrix, matrix characteristics. Uh, but the history of dolomitization of Gargano is important for also for uh, for exploration reason because uh, the Gargano is here. Mm, you see, is on the eastern flank of the Apulian platform. Mm. I don't know if you see my mouse. Then you have the Ionian Basin, and on the other side you have the platform of Albania, of, uh, of uh, Croatia, and south of uh, part of Greece, the Ionian Greece. Okay. Uh, all around we we have this kind of myolica or myolica type sediment, particularly. When you go, this is a fantastic place in Gargano where you see this uh, kind of cliffs, very similar to the cliffs, to the chalk cliffs of England or of the Cré cliff of, uh, of Normandy in France. This is a bit quite more lithified than chalk, of course. And, but you see that in uh, just looking at an old geological map, there are a lot of bodies in this green, which is the, the, the Maiolica limestone, which are completely dolomitized. And uh, this is the Maiolica when it is not dolomitized. The Gargano is world famous for fantastic slumps in cherty limestone of, of lower Cretaceous. And these are dolomitic bodies. So uh, Andrea Rustichelli uh, worked with, with me for some time, he's now in Camerino, and he did a great job in analyzing all these uh, bodies and found uh, many uh, different examples of lateral, lateral uh, transition from limestone to dolomite. And normally this is associated to, to fall, to, to breccia. And, and to thin sedimentary faults. Like in this case, you see the, the faults, uh, you see the, the brecciated limestone, which is completely do dolomitized. Mm. And uh, you may recognize in this uh, matrix, uh, the matrix is dolomites, coarse dolomites, and these are the pieces of the chart 
of the original Cherty uh, limestone, which has been broken by brecciation. And so uh, we did uh, some geochemistry on this, and we found quite curiously, unexpectedly, that I, I was expecting typical hydrothermal values, but they are very, very close to marine values, the isotope values of these rocks, both the, the oxygen, the stable isotopes and the strontium isotopes. The, okay, the, there, is a, the, there is a dispersion of these values, but there are many, many samples occurring on exactly the values expected for marine waters. But what makes this story very interesting, actually we found that these outcrops were looking an explanation for a well which was drilled by ENI in, in the, I think, in the 80s. Uh, for some time, Petrocelltics expected the permit to, to, to produce, but then the, the permit never arrived because, because as you see, it's very close to the, the, the coast for, for environmental reason. Uh, was not possible to produce from this well. And in this well, what is interesting, this is the Maiolica limestone. What should be a very white and uh, uh, tight limestone is a coarse black laminated dolomites, full, full of, of oil. Mm. Uh, these are two examples. You see the breccia and you see the, 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 the small cluster of, of, um, of chert. Mm. And uh, this, is, this was the target, the former target of this well. So the well was drilled because uh, it was expected that in these Triassic, Jurassic rocks, uh, there, is a la uh, there is porosity, as you see, probably not very well connected, but there is no oil at all. And unexpectedly, the oil was found in the dolomitized uh, Maiolica uh, rocks. Okay, And so we... Um, uh, the only model we, we tried to develop uh, was uh, a circulation through faults of, uh, of marine waters probably uh, interacting with the subsurface and uh, in a kind of, 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 uh, of geothermal field. And I would say that the, a, a very, very similar model has been developed quite recently for the Red Sea by Katie Hollis and co-workers, probably at the same time. So uh, I think it's, a, I would say that is a, one of the more model of dolomitization that should be explored and, and that, that is quite new. But the most interesting is that when we go on the other side of the Adriatico, on the Adriatic Sea in Greece, the, the local name of the Maiolica limestone is a Vigla limestone. Uh, uh, the Vigla limestone is dolomitized. And when you go on the outcrops, we are in Greece now, this is absolutely, absolutely comparable to the, to the Gargano Peninsula. This is the, the, the original uh, layered Maiolica. Here is dolomitized, but most commonly it's fractured. There are uh, uh, faults, since sedimentary faults, fracturing, chert, and, and dolomites, and coarse dolomites. This is the thin sections, a thin section from, from uh, these uh, dolomites. Okay. Um, we go in the northern Alps, sorry, in, in northern Italy, in southern Alps, let's say just here uh, close to Milano. Hmm? In the northern Italy, we have uh, the Maiolica limestone with chert, and here again we have breccia, dolomiti dolomitic breccia, and we have the chert broken to to show much better that you are that you have brecciated the Maiolica, and uh, through these faults, uh, very early dolom dolomitization has produced a rock with a completely different texture, which, as I show you, was absolutely unexpected when the drill, when the drill was, uh, was done. Mm -hmm. uh, now we go down in succession. I don't know if I have, a, if, if still I have time, Muntaz, I think, yes. Uh, yes, uh, yes, yeah. you have. Yeah. Okay, I, I go up to the, to the end. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, one of the of the first things I learned while studying 
the Apenninic platform, uh, I was told at the very beginning, it was generally assumed in the past that all what all, uh, all the Triassic was Dolomitic, and all Jurassic was uh, limestone. Actually, I found that there is a big transition in Dolomites between Norian and Richian. Uh, the Norian is per pervasively dolomitized, and the dolomitization degrees de decrease in the Rhetian. The Rhetian and a great part of the Jurassic is, uh, by contrast, formed by large-scale bodies of, uh, of dolomites which cross-cut bedding. So this is a late dolomite. Hmm? Then in Cretaceous, you have seen already that dolomites is uh, stratiform, is related to bedding. Hmm? And so this, this is something that I found in southern Italy, but was uh, at the same time was found documented also in northern Italy. Uh, just to show you, this is a, an example of the of the very early and complete dolomitization of the Norian. Mm. Uh, this is an example of one of the cliff, a beautiful cliff of Norian rocks. These are absolutely comparable to the Dolomia Principale of the Alps, one of the most important uh, and thick of dolomite formation in the Alps. And uh, uh, when we go in the Jurassic, here, here we are on the Jurassic, you believe me, this is the bedding. And the bedding, as you see, there is a, a sharp contact between uh, limestone with uh, large bivalves of Rachian age. And in these Rachian carbonates, you have remnants of limestone, but most of the rock have been dolomitized. But this dolomite hmm, is totally different in terms of geochemistry, in terms of petrography from the Rachian. And the Rachian dolomites are contained also in Jurassic. Hmm. For example, if you go in the, a little bit up in the lower Jurassic, you may, found, you may find similar dolomitization fronts. So discordant body of dolomite. Um, I, I don't know how to silentiate this, sorry. Uh, you, you see a discordant body of dolomites similar to the region. And these similarities uh, is very well expressed by oxygen isotopes. You may see that the Norian early fine-grained dolomites of the Norian have a totally different uh, isotopic signature respect to, to the region and to the Jurassic. And what is fantastic is that the, the strontium isotopes of all the, the Jurassic uh, examples at different stratigraphic height have absolutely the same uh, strontium isotope um, value, suggesting a single episode from a single source, probably marine source, totally different from the region, from the Norian one. So this is important because it's not uh, limited to uh, southern Italy. By the way, uh, this late event is particularly concentrated in intraplatform basin. So this is an old interpretation I did. So we had the intraplatform basin uh, with the sedimentary folds and uh, dolomite bodies are, that's why they are concentrated in these basins. So this difference between Norian and Jurassic uh, has a regional significance, so as an exploration significance. This is, for example, the, the Jurassic Calcari Grigi of, uh, of Trento Plateau. And it has been demonstrated that there is a lot of dolomites on the bottom, but it's not ancient stratiform dolomites. It's a big, huge body of cross-cutting uh, late diagenetic dolomites. And so when we, again, we, we went to the Greece, uh, in Greece we have this huge uh, body, which is the Pantocrator limestone. Uh, and uh, um, and uh, 
is considered a transition from the Triassic Dolomites to the Jurassic limestone. <clears throat> but actually, <coughs> we found many examples. This is a, a, a field book sketch showing a, a lateral transition from uh, a paxton, a calcareous paxton, to a, to a partly crushed, due to brecciation, uh, dolomites, uh, coarse dolomite. Okay. And this is in uh, these uh, lower Jurassic rocks. But there are also evidence of a Norian type dolomites, particularly where, where you have uh, huge outcrops uh, of, of dolomites, which has, as, look at this, for example, a perfect fabric preserving dolomites, exactly what has been found in, Ita in southern Italy, in the Alps, in Hungary, in, uh, now in Greece. So I think it's a, a very uh, common phenomenon. And we have been recently also in Iran. Uh, we did some field studies. The, the aim of the project was to make a balanced sections through the Zagros of northwest Iran, close to the Iraqi border. But uh, my part and the part of Mariano Parente was to, to study the stratigraphy. And uh, by studying uh, a well and some outcrops of Upper Triassic and Lower Jurassic, uh, these are the, 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 the place where we could study the, um, the field in blue and uh, the, the wells in green, we found a comparable um, uh, comparable uh, uh, fishes, as you see in the in the Norian, in the Triassic rocks, we had uh, uh, fabric preserving dolomite uh, with a pervasive replacement, so totally dolomitic bodies, mm, non-luminescent, with the characters of early dolomites, suggesting that even even in in, uh, in in Iran, the characters of uh, of the huge bodies of Upper Triassic age of Dolomites are due to uh, very early replacement. There is also some saddle Dolomite, but it was not. Hmm. As you may see, the isotopic the 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 Upper Triassic is this Kuracin uh, formation. Hmm. This is the I think the the Iranian. Uh, name for this part of the formation, but anyway, this is the Upper Triassic, and you may see that you may see that the the, the oxygen values of the dolomites are just a bit heavier than the than limestone, showing the typical uh, expected values for low temperature early dolomite. Okay, and these are. Uh, uh, and uh, also the, the, the strontium isotope suggests early replacement. So the, the, the general conclusion is that uh, we have a very huge uh, body of dolomites of upper Triassic age, which suffered limited boreal. Most of the dolomites was formed uh, during early diagenesis. And uh, this, uh, this is part of uh, another part of the study. Uh, on, on the bottom, you have again this Kuracini formation. Then you have an interval, the Sarki formation, in which you have the, uh, strong cyclicity with, in, with interlayers uh, uh, containing some shale. And then on top, you have the Secanian formation, which is a mainly limestone, partly dolomitized, but it's very thick and we know uh, intershale layers, and as you may see, the as you may see that the the the, uh, the number of uh, of large scale fractures is uh, absolutely different in the different intervals due to the the different stacking pattern. And uh, we did uh, we performed also a modeling of the of the um, fluid circulation. Uh, by using uh, DFN, uh, DFN uh, models. And of course, we found that the, the number of large fractures was the main 
the main factor to give to give uh, high permeability. Okay. Now, as I expected, if you just want to see some picture about Sardinia, I can go on, but or I can stop there to to have some discussion. Just tell me, Muntaz, as you prefer. Hello? Hello, I hope you heard me. Muntaz? Yeah, uh, you have, uh, you want to conclude it? Well, I, I have another story to tell, but uh, I don't know if if, uh, if, if I have you time. Have, you have uh, uh, 10, 10, 10 more minutes, so ah, that okay. we can have 15 okay. minutes for the for the question answer session. Okay, I can just just because you, minutes, huh? okay. So you asked me yeah. to talk about. Uh, I, I'm sorry, I forgot to to change this in in Italian in in English. That's because uh, I should confess you that last night, yesterday night, uh, at the very last moment when I was concluding my 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 my, my slides. Uh, uh, I had a typical phenomena that I, I, I lost all the what I, I did, I did uh, during the day, so I had to start again, and I forgot to change uh -huh. some of these slides, so <laughs> it has been quite terrible. It happens. It happens, yeah. <laughs> and so I, I was saying up there that some years ago, some 20 years ago, the Rudy Svenen knew very well the story, uh, there's been, uh, I say here, la scoperta dell'acqua calda, is the discovery of warm water. <laughs> uh, to, to say yeah. that uh, uh, the, the, the oil industry discovered the importance of uh, hydrothermal dolomites. So for, for, for a while, this has been very popular and it looks like a very new discovery. I like to say always, and this is uh, one of the volume of the APG, which launched this, uh, this uh, interest in hydrothermal uh, reservoirs. Uh, but I always remember to, to see, to, to, I always like to remember that, uh, as you see, in 1928, in this paper, dolomitization and ore deposition, Hewitt clearly states that in the for people working on on uh, Mississippi Valley type deposits, on base metal deposits, was quite common to 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 see an association of uh, hydrothermal dolomites with <coughs> with um, uh, with a metal deposition. Okay. Yeah. But this was very popular, and uh, I studied Sardinia actually many many years ago. Uh, as you may see in this sketch of Western Europe, Sardinia uh, it was uh, in Paleozoic time or even in Mesozoic time was uh, strictly close to southern France and Spain. So the rocks which are now in Sardinia are, can be found in, uh, in Catalonia. Um, that's because uh, the geo that, that's explaining why the geology of Sardinia is totally different. And there is a fantastic lower Paleozoic succession. There are ancient mines. These mines were uh, discovered by the Phoenicians, so coming from the Lebanon, and uh, they were, uh, of course, the Roman time. And for uh, for all along the, the history, they have been uh, exploited till uh, 20 years. 30 years ago, and they have been closed because of the price of metals. And what is interesting is in this panorama, you may see a ridge which is almost completely dolomitized. And these bodies are all what you have of a limestone, Cambrian limestone, metamorphic Cambrian limestone, uh, which has been completely dolomitized in, in a Permian time. So many hundreds of uh, some hundreds of, of, uh, of millions of years after the deposition and the metamorphism of limestone. So I think it's a quite unusual case 
of uh, okay. hydrothermal dolomitization, but is relevant because it's uh, it's uh, it's quite well exposed in a nice place. It's uh, easy to make a, a, a field trip. So I I leaded some two or three field trips in the last years to show people how some nice examples uh, of of this region of a large body of hydrothermal dolomites. So this is the mine of Iglesias. This is another example. In yellow, you have the dolomites. The yellow color is due to the fact that it's late hydrothermal dolomites, so it's fair one. And so the weathering make all the, fer the, uh, the iron two became a iron three. Uh, and so you have this uh, oxi oxidization and uh, everything is yellow. Mm, you have some ankerite. Um, okay, it's no, no time to, to, to show you these maps. So I just want you not to discuss this topic, which is quite known, just to show how beautiful can be the outcrops. Here, for example, uh, the guy which is uh, on the left is, uh, is the Professor Yanache, I and mean, he had a lot of uh, black hairs many years ago. Uh, and you see again the white and the yellow, and this vertical latitude is because this Cambrian limestone has been uh, uh, is metamorphic. So here the fluids were capable to dolomitize a rock which had almost no porosity at all, but was a rock with a, uh, a strong foliation, vertical foliation, and probably this foliation placed opened during an extensional phase and where the conduits for, as you can see here in the bottom of this picture, the introduction of a late, very late, because uh, I remember you, this is Cambrian and this is a process of Permian age uh, and formed this kind of dolomites uh, with a lot of holes, so of bags, not very much interesting for permeability and actually uh, for, uh, for from a point of view of the oil industry, uh, this process is not useful to create a, uh, effective porosity and permeability in terms of oil. In this case, it was important to create space for, for some minerals and another, uh, some uh, metals, minerals, so lead and zinc mineralization. You may see here again this contrast. And uh, I, I just want to show you a, a, a nice, uh, I conclude with a, 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 an aspect very nice of this story that I sometimes I show also to students because we, we learn from school that if, if, for example, look here, you have a conglomerate. So if a conglomerate, uh, the, the class of a conglomerate from the time of James Hutton at the, at the beginning of geology, a class of conglomerate is, of course, older than the conglomerate. So when I show this outcrop to some uh, colleagues, one of them was uh, a, a guy which is uh, uh, quite, uh, quite uh, uh, hard when he discuss about geology. Uh, it's Hans Mackel, probably Rudy Svenen remember him. He told me, uh, Alessandro, if these clusters are dolomitic, they are older than the, the, the conglomerate. So if the conglomerate is Ordovician, because this is an Ordovician conglomerate dolomitized, uh, so the dolomitization is younger. And he was right in principle, because this is what you should expect. But if you look at this uh, class, they are quite elongated. You see, you see, they are not uh, uh, as a ball, but they, they are as, uh, as a, a, they have been elongated by deformation because both the rock on the left and the rock on the right have been uh, metamorphosed. And the metamorphism is uh, younger than, of course, their deposition. So what's, 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 what's the point? If these clusters would have been dolomitic before the formation, they shouldn't have been deformed because at this low grade of metamorphisms, you have no deformation uh, of dolomites. You have deformation of limestone. This is quite well known. I have other examples in, in, in other parts of, the, of the Italy of the world. You see here, this is a, a, a cluster 
which was a, a, a floyal class, big, big, uh, uh, a boulder was not a class, it was a big boulder which has been elongated. So the, the elongation was due to the metamorphism, which is upper carboniferous in age, and the dolomitization went after. So the fluids went through this uh, silicoclastic material, and so a fluid, a carbonate fluid in a silicoclastic material has no effect. When the fluids reach a carbonate class, they make, they dolomitize it. And so the class was already elongated according to, as you see, there is a, there is a foliation and has been dolomitized. So in this case, the rule that the class is dolomitic, so dolomite is older than the conglomerate, is, is false, okay? It's uh, because the process has selectively dolomitized this class. And this is quite clear. It was very, very difficult to convince the people during the, the field trip on these single outcrops that this was the case. But with this one, it's much easier. You see a conglomerate here, and you see a lot of limestone clust, and on the lower part, you have the same class totally dolomitized. So in this case, you see that the, the class were not dolomitic when they were broken. They have been dolomitized after the conglomerate formed. So I, I, I just selected this point to discuss with this, this example of Sardinia, because uh, we have, of course, uh, data to demonstrate fluid inclusion, uh, isotopes, uh, now to demonstrate the hydrothermal late nature of the, this dolomitization. But I think that uh, what is the most nice of this uh, example are the field evidences. And so, as a, as, a, as a geologist, as Rudy and Francois, I, I'm sure, would agree, uh, the field evidence is still the most important thing so have, we have to observe before to taking samples and put them in a lab, uh, put them in, in a, in a, um, a computer and so on. Okay. And I stop here. I think it's, it's already quite tiring for you, everybody. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, uh, Alessandro. You are on time. So, <laughs> yeah, nice outcrops of uh, Sardinia you showed again, and I remembered the, the IAS uh, trip yes. uh, back in uh, 2009, I think. Yeah. Uh, we are ready to go again if you want <laughs> with students. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if, uh, students, yeah, COVID, yeah, yeah. I know if COVID and money would uh, would allow us to, to go there, but uh, it's still one of the best yeah. places to make a field, field trip, not only for dolomites, of course, but because there is a very fantastic uh, sedimentology, um, mining uh, and deformation and so on. It's a great yeah. place for, for, uh, for, uh, for teaching uh, Southern Sardinia. So I will ask uh, uh, Anna if uh, he can manage the rest. <laughs> the question answer session. Yeah, if you can manage the question answer session and uh, other things. Yeah. Uh, we will ask the audience to to if they have some questions on the on the on the presentation uh, shown by uh, described by uh, Alessandro. Yeah. Thank I you, stop, uh, I stopped the sharing of the screen. Yeah. OK, yes. Now we are again on. Um, so uh, if there is any question, any information, I can. We have a question Ali Harun. Uh, uh, yeah, please go ahead. Hello. Uh, thank you, uh, Professor Alessandro, for a very nice virtual field trip and uh, showing yes. us field photographs and telling us the importance of uh, field work that remains vital. So my question is uh, regarding your uh, field trip and your work in Italy, where you presented uh, different limestones and dolomites, and you said that the transition from top dolomite to lesser dolomite and then 
to the yeah. limestone. Yeah. Do you mm -hmm. think there is a link of uh, sea level or tectonics that has done something with this, or is there any other phenomena in your opinion? My my first uh, um, impression, and still uh, it is like that, is that uh, that's exactly the picture that you would expect for for a reflux process. So the picture is uh, not related to sea level, but it's related to diagenesis, early diagenesis. So probably you have the fluids going down, dolomitizing, and when you the fluids go down, uh, lose uh, the capacity to dolomitize because, uh, of course, lose magnesium. So these are marine fluids according to the classic model. I would say classic because it's of the 1950s, the models of uh, Adams and Rhodes, which has been numerically simulated in recent years. And this is what you would expect on a, on a, on a, on an outcrop. Uh, some people have tried to, to, to see if the geochemistry on some outcrops confirmed this. And I, I, I say that uh, that's the, the, the topic of the future thesis, which should be developed by, by Muhammad Awais. Uh, so my idea is now, after our general study, we have a, a very, very, very good control. We can follow beds for kilometers. And so we can test by geochemistry if uh, what what the numerical model predicts can be can be found on, on the field. So again, uh, the, the the numerical models and all the developments, the quantitative models are of course very very important. But still, they have to be uh, they have to be uh, grounded you know, on, on ground on rocks. <laughs> and so that's that's the idea of this project. I don't know if. Uh, Muhammad had the opportunity to to stay in the audience, but uh, it will be. It's just, uh, I think, a, a, a fortunate case that I am talking to to you in Pakistan, and a student from Pakistan is coming to to Naples. So I think it's a nice uh, indication for the future. It's a <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, any other question uh, from the audience? Mm -hmm. uh, I have one. Uh, so, uh, uh, Alessandro, uh, you talked about these Cambrian uh, outcrops in uh, Sardinia. Uh, uh, we have seen a similar kind of uh, outcrops in the in, uh, in the Kita Valley of uh, Malaysia, where uh, these Paleozoic uh, carbonates uh, are uh, being uh, affected by by the process of dolomitization, or there uh, again a similar kind of uh, porosity. Uh, the, the rock is very tight in terms of porosity and permeability, but the, the fractures uh, uh, played its role in terms of dolomitization of the of these uh, Kinta Valley limestone. Uh, they yeah. call it uh, Paleozoic, not given exact age of that particular uh, carbonate succession, but again, uh, as it is the oldest uh, succession uh, above the basement rocks, so uh, uh, these carbonates are uh, being affected by dolomitization, but uh, again, similarly, the, the tightness of these carbonates, they didn't allow fluids to to penetrate through the rock, and mm -hmm. it's only the fractures and the faults along which dolomitization occurred. So it's a typical yeah. example of uh, mm -hmm. fault and fracture-related dolomitization. You, you, you said this was. You, some of the you, you, you you told that this is a, you you found you studied this in Malaysia, Malaysia. Yeah, yeah in Malaysia. Yeah, it's uh, yes, in the uh, central part of Malaysia. Uh, known as Kinta Valley limestone. No, I didn't did very very detailed uh, uh, 
um, micro structural studies about the process but i'm pretty sure that uh, you have seen that if you look at the matrix the rocks is really absolutely tight because it's a it's a kind of a milonite no you have uh, yeah. this uh, this uh, this limestone which has been totally recrystallized in a very very low grade of metamorphism so if you look at the matrix mm. absolutely you have no pore no porosity and the foliation yeah. is very tight but uh, presumably during the extension of time in Permian, uh, yeah. we have some evidence that this should have been happening in Permian, certainly before mm. of Triassic, because uh, on top there is some Triassic rocks which are not permitized. And so uh, the, probably during this extension time, these foliation were weakness planes. And so certainly mm. part of the fluids uh, went through foliation, but anyway, they were able to to replace completely the, um, the rocks. And when you have a massive dolomites, you have again no porosity at all. So it would yeah. be interesting to understand exactly the dynamics of this process, but I, I didn't try to, to do that. Yeah. But maybe it could be a nice, a nice test, especially I think I suggested this, but I uh, there are still some students uh, in this moment uh, by Katie Hollis. I don't know if Rudy is more uh, aware of that because we, I remember mm -hmm. we, we we discussed many times ago about uh, to discuss, for example, how the, the zebra structures develop, and I'm pretty sure that yeah. there are there is no one more type of zebra. There are more, at least two or three types. And uh, what is interesting is uh, anyway. I think would be interesting to compare process which affect uh, rocks which are totally different as a matrix. So th this would be one example. Uh, metamorphic, totally um, totally tight and foliated limestone could be a nice uh, end member. Yeah. No? To compare, uh, for example, with uh, with, uh, with with other case in which you have a, a more porous carbonate, in which you may suppose a more diffuse uh, diffusion of fluids. So the, this yeah. would be interesting to to see which which uh, texture results from the different the, the different point of uh, um, starting point. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, it is more uh, studies, <laughs> as always. So, uh, if there is uh, any question from the audience, uh, otherwise uh, we move forward. Uh, somebody has uh, had raised uh, hands, but at the moment I can't see. Uh, yeah, Muhammad Saki. Uh, yeah, please, uh, Saki. Uh, if you have a question. Yeah, sure. Thank you, Montalso. Uh, can you hear me? Hopefully you can hear me. Yes. Yeah. yes. Okay, thanks, uh, Professor, for your excellent presentation. Uh, I will have two questions. Most probably these both would be interlinked. First, you explained that uh, the fine size, you know, dolomite, you know, as it's going, getting more and more fine, you know, it has more and more fractures, right? So finding, finding, uh, you know, usually when we uh, see in terms of ductility, you know, it 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 it, it takes to the brittleness, you know, it, it less brittle and uh, uh, you know and uh, more ductile when it's going towards the finding of you know grain size, so which doesn't let you know fractures to develop. But doloma in in shale, this is a theory, you know, as much we have a shale, uh, more and more finding, and it it gives a more and more ductile. You know? introduce more ductileness in, in the shale, which which doesn't let it to have the fracture develop. But in dolomite, you know, this process is a bit, bit different from shale, right? That that what we, I want to understand. And secondly, you said you, you have a lot of storage here, but uh, permeability is not there, right? So mm -hmm. so did, did you have any um, acid frac job, you know, in, in these dolomites to see the producibility and productivity of these dolomites? When a lot of stories, but no permeability and fractures uh, be not uh, helping uh, to to produce. You know, as you see. well. The, uh, yep. Uh, for a second, your question. Uh, uh, well, the 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 matrix 
porosity and permeability, resulting permeability. However, low, it's important because, uh, uh, as you as you know, the, the the porosity system is a, is a, is a dual or even a three level system. So the matrix uh, porosity is important not only for storage, but because it conveyed fluids to the first order fractures and then to the corridors. We, one of our students developed a, a, a numerical model about this, uh, this kind of relationships. So uh, when I talked the low permeability, I, I, I was uh, uh, talking about matrix permeability. So in terms of matrix permeability, higher porosity, uh, at least in many of the examples I've studied, is, uh, does not mean higher permeability because, of course, the pore throat is important. So the distribution of pore, not only the, the pore. And apparently in many cases, um, as I have shown on, on the very first slides, uh, for a given porosity, you have no better permeability in, in dolomites, okay? Then, of course, uh, the things change when you have the fractures. But then fractures, you have to consider the, the number of fractures. And in that case, the, the became important the, tex the, the texture. And uh, so the... the so, so does, I, does, I didn't does understand any, exactly... Does, does, does any... any uh, does, does hydraulic or... Sorry, acidic frac, you know, uh, simulation did help, you know, to increase that matrix permeability, you know, if, if there was any uh, example, you know, of uh, producing from the dolomites after having the hydraulic or acidic frac from this primary porosity, metric porosity. Hydraulic fra uh, pro uh, fracture? Yeah, if you have done any acidic frac, uh, no. frac oh, no, fracking no, no. in this dolomite. Ah, no, absolutely not. No, 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 no. Okay. Okay. Uh, about the, the ductility, the first part of the question, I didn't understand what was exactly your, your yes, question. Uh, you, you said, you know, uh, as, as we go more and more fining uh, you know, in, in dolomite, you know, size, uh, we have a more and more fine uh, grain size of the dolomite, we are getting more yeah. and more fractures, you know, right? Natural fractures. You are talking about natural fractures, right? In when, when I when I try to, to collect the paper, uh, trying to explain the mechanical properties of, of dolomites, particularly engineer papers, mm. to explain the, the characteristics, I found, uh, I think it's a, it's, a, it's a domain which should be explored by geologists, not by engineer, because uh, there are many contrasting uh, paper because it's difficult to take all the different, um, uh, to compare many samples, um, uh, to, to try to, to see the contribution of texture, but not only texture, also the, the, the shape. No? I think now in the future, the possibility to use uh, the, the tomography could be important because uh, the shape of the, of the pores affect the probably the mechanical properties. No? But it's quite a mess to try to, to, to find a relationship between a single property with a mechanical uh, macroscopic property like a Poisson ratio or like, a, okay, this, this, uh, we found, we try to, 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 to make a comparison between these, but it's very difficult because, for example, you need samples coming from beds which have the same thickness, which have the same tectonic history, because you cannot take a sample here, another sample there, to make a comparison about the texture and not consider that they come from beds with different thickness or with different history. So it's a, it's really quite complicated domain. Yeah, in, uh, yeah, in, we, yeah. in principle, of course, everything is coarser. Also, rudestone, for example, respect to to micrite in limestone, are uh, have a much less uh, much less uh, fracture. I think uh, in a, in a, uh, Rudy talked about that, and uh, then you have to consider also the aperture of this of the fractures. Eh? To, to, to explain permeability. So there is a, yeah, yeah. I, I think that's a, there is a lot of, uh, of uh, factor with, and it's, what is different is to isolate 
a single contribution to find a, a, a good relationship, a reliable relationships. Yeah, that was actually mean if we can develop a brittleness index, you know, for these different uh, uh, rock types, mm -hmm. those may define, you know, the ductility or brittleness of these, you know, in comparison and can help you know to where we can get more fractures and from reservoir point of view you know sure so, yeah. yeah that's the main a, role yes the main yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. thank, thank you thank you thank you okay uh, uh, thank you alessandro for a nice talk uh, we move forward to the next presentation uh, uh, next presentation will be given by uh, Dr. Juan Diego Martin Martin, who is uh, Associate Professor of Carbonate Geology at the University of Barcelona. Uh, his research interests include carbonate diagenesis, uh, fluid flow evolution, and sedimentology. He is involved in various projects uh, uh, related to ENP industry. Uh, he is uh, published in well reputed.